and uh, happy to see you all on the fifth webinar in this two weeks time. Some of the partners we yesterday had a meeting, shared their impressions from participants, but also from their view. And it looks like, yes, it's intensive learning experience, a lot of new information for uh, most of people. And we acknowledge this. Imagine this, what you get in these two weeks. We accumulated through 10 years of experience because in 2011, the open batch standard was launched by Mozilla. And uh, back then with Limonas, we set the, one of the computers and we're receiving the first ever two badges from Mozilla. Very simple ones. Uh, do click here, get one, and you are happy. What you are uh, receiving and accessing right uh, now in these two weeks is actually a condensed version of accumulated knowledge from diverse organizations, partners. We work with outside of our networks. One, on one hand, it's a very speedy onboarding to open badges for you. On the other hand, I imagine it's quite a lot of things to digest. What is good that all the resources which you access on Canvas platform, they will stay available even after this course. So if you have access to it, it will remain. So you can come back alone, come back with your team, come back whenever you will continue designing your badge systems and we will stay available because we are in open badges work for a while and we plan to stay longer. That will be possibilities for us maybe to establish new collaborations or link to existing projects and so on. So the first part will be dedicating to experience of creating an activity or playlist on series of learning, seeing what kind of questions you have, maybe challenges you experience and so on. And then on the second half of our uh, webinar, we will focus a lot on endorsements. Whenever we work with open badges, we hear constantly questions, who values badges, who recognizes this as a tool, who gives any credit for people earning badges. And we can hear these questions from everywhere, from learners. When we go to schools and students ask, so which universities give a credit for uh, a badge? or which companies would take into consideration if I will show a badge on my CV. At the same time, when we talk to educational organizations, they say, so how many organizations are using badges? Is it a big number? Which companies maybe already know about badges and so on? If we talk to universities, exactly the same question they say, so how many universities and colleges are using? So everyone is caring about everyone using badges, but rarely they want to be the starter one. And that's where it's uh, interesting uh, thing that uh, this classical uh, maybe a dilemma, what was the first, the egg or the chicken? So who needs to make the first step? And we truly believe that actually it's our turn to make the first step, creating badges and issuing regardless of how many organizations are doing around the world. And around the world, actually enormous amount of badges already issued. I will give later a number of badges issued, which we know from one research. But endorsements would be something we want to look into then creating our badge systems and starting from our organizations and programs, seeing who would be people to and organizations to recognize badges and give value in exchange for a badge. That's endorsement. Someone says publicly, we value skills you recognize, experiences you provide, and in exchange to getting a badge, people can unlock new opportunities. And these opportunities can be very diverse. And about that, we will talk on the second uh, half of our training. And we would like to continue. And I think one aspect that was touched a little bit already in discussion forums, but also just before we went to the groups, was the question of, who is recognizing badges or what creates a value of a badge. And I wanted to start with one image that may look like a little bit complex, but at the same time, it also shows that value of a badge doesn't depend on just one single thing. You know, it's always about having quite number of components and I'll try to zoom in so you would be able to see more aspects there. Just checking with the colleagues and is it visible? You see the image? Yes. Good. So that's what the image is saying. What's a badge is really worth it. And you can see below it's like a formula. 
Yeah, you have brackets and then you have certain things which are multiplied by the viewer perception and ends up in the value of a badge. And I think this image very nicely shows that the value of a badge depends on really quite many things. So one aspect of the value is the issuer. So actually, who is the issuer and what value the whole issuer brings? What's the image of organization or individual or an expert? And I, I saw in the forum for one of you were asking, can I issue a badge if I'm an individual trainer, if I don't have an organization? And yes, you can do that. And especially if you have a good name and you are recognized as a person in your context, it already gives credibility to a badge that you're doing a good quality work. So who is the issuer of a badge is one of the aspects of trust in the badge and kind of perception. It's like diplomas. Certain diplomas from some universities are more valued than from others. It's very similar here. It depends really who is the issuer and what's the name or, or image of that issuer in the context where people are using badges. Uh, the next important aspect is the meaning of a badge. What this badge means, what this badge shows. Does it show participation in some event? Does it show that you are competent in doing something? Does it show some specific achievement? For example, you went through some program for the whole year and it shows your long-term involvement in something. So the value of a badge also depends, you know, what it means, what it shows. Is it a quality? Is it a knowledge? Is it a specific achievement? Is it participation in some very meaningful activity? The other aspect that we will soon explore a bit more is called endorsement. An endorsement means that there is a third party or external partner giving a value to your badge and they give this value to a badge because they value skills developed or they value the program that you are developing or maybe that external organization trusts in your organization very much and they endorse badges because you are the ones actually running that program and issuing badges so that's one of the also possible aspects how to bring a bigger value of a badge. And endorsement is one of the methods, one of the ways how to do that. Another aspect is what was the journey to get that badge? Did it, a person had to earn more badges to get that one? Maybe this badge is like the super badge, which you had to unlock by earning 20 other badges. So it's really an evidence of a big effort that you already dedicated to earn this badge and finish some kind of educational program. And after all, when, you, when we look at who is the issuer, what badge really means, who is endorsing, and what was the journey, a pathway to earn that badge, still very much depends on who is actually viewing at that data and who is making certain decisions. So the question to who is recognizing badges or what is the value of a badge also depends a lot on the ones who are viewing the badge. Do they trust any of these aspects? Do they trust the organization who issued? Do they trust the process behind issuing a badge? Do they trust a quality of the program? Do they trust the endorsers? Maybe these endorsers are just your random friends. Maybe they have no value in it. So it really depends on many of the aspects and any of the aspects. And the viewer perception is multiplying really the value of a badge. If they in general value skills that you are developing, perhaps you don't need much more. Or if they trust the work you do, they don't need to go into any other details because they know you did a good job developing that particular skill. So that's a bit about the uh, uh, value of a badge 
And I think very much it's about the value of skills, how other organizations, other people, educational institutions, how do they value what you are developing? Are you working on digital literacy, media skills, some social skills, whatever it is, are these skills important? Are they valued? And is that way how you're developing these skills? Is it also valued or not? And the badge value will depend a lot on what's behind the badge. Not that much what the badge is. So these were a few things on the value and recognition of badges. And we would like to invite you to also think now more about the endorsement aspect. This is something we put towards the end of the course with the idea that first of all, let's try to get the whole essentials about badges, how badges work, what badges are, how to create a badge. And then to look at endorsement because endorsement is one more additional layer of badge and badge value. So I would like to show now uh, one tool that we will invite you to try out. Here is the exercise to think who are other organizations or other people who potentially may give endorsement to your badges and or your badge system. Yeah. Who are the ones that could say, we value what you do and we vouch for you or we vouch for a badge or for the skills that uh, you are developing. Yeah. You saw endorsement was one of the pillars of a badge value. So that's a way to start thinking a little bit, who are the other possible stakeholders? And I think yesterday, Sala was asking that question, how to communicate and who can help in increasing value of badges. And we had an entire project on that, how to involve employers, other stakeholders to really support badges and programs that we are developing. And when you will go to breakout rooms, we will ask you to think of who are the organizations around you or in your area and place them on this board. Now, what is this board about? You have two axes, the horizontal one and vertical. The horizontal axis shows how far or how close are these organizations to you. For example, if you are already cooperating a lot with a local employment office, they know you, them, there is a connection. You might want to put that organization somewhere in on the line where it's easy to achieve. So it's more on the left side of the field, meaning it's easy to achieve agreement of endorsement. It's easy to achieve that kind of trust that yes, I do trust in badges. You can add sticky notes on the Jamboard by clicking on this middle icon in this uh, control panel. It's a sticky note or you just click on control shift P and then you have a sticky note. So I, let's say I put local employment office. You choose the color you want right there. You save. That's it. You have a, one of the possible stakeholders. Now, let's say if I have a good contact with them, I put it somewhere in that field. If I think this is important endorser, but we have never cooperated with them. So it's cold contact. You put it more towards the right side. Now the vertical axis is about the value. So how important, how big value potentially this endorser will bring to you. So if you think that if local employment office will endorse badges, it will increase chances of young people to be employed or it will uh, raise the value of your whole program, you would put it somewhere there where it's higher value on the top. If you think it's easy to achieve, but the endorsement of local employment office doesn't matter that much, it would not give much value. You put it more below.
No, maybe it's somewhere in between. This mapping allows you to see who are the most important external organizations and who of these may bring potentially higher value. So when you make that mapping, then we will ask you to look at it and most probably you would want to look at possible external partners who might bring you higher value and are relatively easy to contact. They are close to you. Yeah? You have contact with them. You can cooperate with them. They know what you do. You don't need to prove yourself anymore. So these would be your key partners to start with. Of course, you may have some organizations that you think they will bring potentially high value, but it's not so easy to achieve that cooperation. So you might put them there, but it's still a corner to look at. And it's a place where you still want to look, but usually it's not the first step to do because we would like them, you know, to uh, suggest contacting first the ones that it's easy to connect and who bring you certain value. So that will be the task. One more time, you can click on the sticky note and write down the name of organization and just using mouse, you put it anywhere in that field. If you think you created by mistake, you can delete it or you can click twice on the note and then edit the text inside you can also change the color if you want now we should be having a breakout rooms and for each room you will have a different jamboard group one room one and uh, even had some colorful logos for the from the medical relief society well done you see here a lot of people so in the high in the lower value higher value easy to achieve section and some big ones, World Health Organization, international organizations. In room two, also a few less here, former partner organizations or the NGO working in the youth field. And then more in the region, experts, universities and national youth councils. Group Room three, group three, the work they have done. I see several times the national agency for youth, business is mentioned here, and religious organizations. In room four, some National Youth Council of Ireland, in the, in, so nearby, and Vet Education, Ministry of Youth and Sport Development, STEM-related industry, so more towards the business field. In room five, we see also a hey, Cities of Learning and Batchcraft or as organizations showing up. International partner organizations, clear, nearby, easier, higher value and easy to achieve. And further to difficult to achieve ministries, again, some gaming industry. I'm very curious what makes it quite difficult or to achieve in the gaming industry. But probably we can open up that in the questions. So looking to this, is there somebody who wants to mute himself or herself and share a little bit about what you have done, learned shortly? I can say about the gaming industry. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm very curious. The gaming industry is it's open for the badges in general, but it's hard to state some kind of communication because of the NDA and because of the GDPR. So they are really closed regarding their practice. They could help us, for example, by sharing some kind of part of practice or the gamification of badges or the gam gamification of activities. So that was an idea behind the gaming industry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Other people who want to respond. This is a really nice uh, activity. I really was really happy for this activity since we can physically also put this as, as a stick. I'm a trainer doing this as a real stick note, but this is really like online stick note that we can put all the stakeholders around. And I like also the chart, how they divided the chart. It's a high value 
and uh, less concern about the issue itself. So it's really nice. It's really a good, uh, I think, tool that can that we can use in the future and put the stakeholders. And I'm going to use it uh, for my uh, next uh, future training. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Very good to hear. Thank you, Hadi. I can also maybe. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. It was uh, so cool to hear that even uh, that we from different countries, from different backgrounds, we share a lot of similarities. The connection with the ministries, institutions, it's so difficult for all of us. And that uh, the closer connection is like with partners, or NGOs, and so also it's so cool to, to have these common mm -hmm. challenges and success. Yeah, even from different faraway countries. Eh? If I think about South Africa and what is the northern country that we have involved here, the, the one I've seen. Peru and Germany. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today, probably yeah. Lithuania. <laughs> Yeah, that's something I, I want to briefly share. What I was thinking is that in our group, I think most of us were coming from quite similar background, which is also, I think, no surprise in this sense, uh, given the, the nature of the training course. So we were all quite orientated in thinking of endorsement stakeholders in the um, non-governmental sector and mostly in the youth fields. But I am very curious, this was also a discussion that we had at one point, I'm very curious to think like, how can this be maybe also applicable for endorsements from the corporate world? or the institutional world. So we tackled this with universities and maybe some like Ministry of Education I, I saw in one of the groups. But I'm quite curious to see what can be the role of the uh, of maybe the more corporate or maybe more formal adult world as we are working in the non-formal youth world. <laughs> Let's say the opposite of what we are working in. So, yeah. so just food for thought, maybe uh, in some of the discussions on uh, Canvas, we can open a, a thread about it. I would be curious to see people's perspective on that one. Yeah, that's a very nice idea, Mariana. And there are a few people in this group who also work with the corporate sector. So it is very nice to, to check out and learn from each other. So how can, can both sides, all the, all, also the other way around, uh, learn from each other? Yeah, so yeah. a discussion, putting it in the forum, discussion forum. It could be also in the module six which was just uh, newly opened. It's focusing on endorsement of open badges. We do have discussion forum where we ask you to share some ideas on endorsement, and this could be a place. So we don't sure. need to open I'll type my one. Yeah, I'll type my question there and just people join in the reply section. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and actually my discovery, also being involved mainly in youth work and NGO world, my discovery was when I started meeting human resource managers from private businesses when I realized they all the time are solving problem of how to find people with certain skills and especially how to find people with good social skills. Because it's something that is valued in many industries, but it's something very difficult to see from a diploma. And the problem is that when, you know, there is no diploma for social skills, then they don't know how to search for people. It's not written on LinkedIn profile. And that's one of the challenges the private businesses are trying somehow to solve. And it's not so easy to do that. And that's where connection, I think, can be because NGOs is a space for social skills development. And it's more where to find that connection, where to find that link. And endorsement could be one of the links if you manage to get connection to, I don't know, Association of Human Resource Managers or some kind of industry association they might be interested really to, to support the work you do and, and see how these skills can be more visible and discoverable by the private sector. Yeah, I remember when we went to South Africa and we went to the hub and we met all those amazing entrepreneurs and they were talking to us about the things that they needed, like the skills they needed, the kind of people they were looking for, but they couldn't find you know there are those kinds of people all around and we were now talking about how the badges could be a signal that people have these skills but then I think we were now talking about yeah endorsement who endorses it and so I think businesses are really important because they need people who have practical skills not theoretical skills so having the local businesses, entrepreneurs, hubs, incubators, endorsing certain badges, I think is really good to speak to the quality, the kind of competence that that badge signifies. Um, 
I would like to show practically how we are building endorsement solution on Cities of Learning platform. And just to let you know that if your organization would like to build endorsement of badges with platform, you would need to notify us to activate this feature because it's still in progress. So what you would need to do is either email us or, or use the question mark on the platform to send a message saying, look, you participate in this training course. You heard about endorsement and you would like for your organization to be activated this feature because again, it's still in work in progress. So when you are on a, a platform, uh, you would need to go to the activity. Uh, and I'm showing one activity example. We work with uh, several partners in uh, Cyprus, Italy, Greece, and uh, uh, Portugal, where they work with delivering trainings for skills uh, young people need to get back to employment or start entrepreneurship activities. So they are building also endorsement schemes for their participants to benefit from badges. We showed that how it works. So basically, when you create an activity, you get a badge, and at the badge level, you have endorsement appearing then once your feature is activated. And you can request endorsement directly from the platform. So it's, of course, good to have pre-agreements with organizations and experts and the businesses which want to get their public endorsement because they need to know that they will receive notification from the platform, which they need to accept and write down a bit in a few words, what does it mean? But when you type in email to send and then write a message uh, uh, reminding about uh, uh, endorsement request. And uh, explaining that it's best if uh, they respond by explaining exactly what they can offer in exchange for a badge. And once it's sent, it uh, arrives to emails of people you ask for endorsement. And if they reply, then they uh, get uh, an uh, endorsement visible on the badge. And the earners who are looking to earn a badge, we can clearly say, see what exactly the badge will offer. That simple example, so our organization is ready to give two hours of free technical support for anyone who shows this badge, because it's related to training on how to use the platform, obviously. But then in your programs, you can think on what could be beneficial for participants who earn badges to get from unlocking opportunities. So let's say maybe some of the badges can unlock internships. Maybe a simple interview with a, a business owner can be a very helpful uh, opportunity, or maybe a mentoring, or maybe a free workshop, or maybe a day around uh, the organization or company could be also an opportunity. And usually you would ask for endorsement at the uh, maybe top level badges not maybe a journey badges because they are not necessary yet the final ones. But for example, at the playlist badge, you already can seek for endorsement. So that's uh, what we, you can do. And again, if you want to get this feature activated for your account, you just need to write us either an email or uh, use the question mark on the platform to send a request and we'll respond to that. And what we would recommend to complete for next week, the 17th of February, is completing module six and everything that is left. Take the opportunity to try out the platform, create a batch, create an activity, create a playlist, because there's still some time to ask questions. And the open batch, so module six is also about open batch endorsements and creating about first ideas about endorsements where you can see some videos from the uh, Badges for Good projects. There will be input from for valuing open badges and types and ideas for endorsements. Some, and then mapping potential endorses. So it is also working on what we have done in the last breakout room. Prioritizing stakeholders and endorsement actions discussion forum is there also. So please feel free to also respond on each other. So if you see some interesting topics from other people, when you want to connect with others, then this is the place um, where you can do that. There in the discussion forum, there are several still topics open where you can respond and you can see how many other people have responded. So for example, in 4.7, design and share your batch system. And there already are 53 comments. So feel free to still look at that. It's very interesting and you can learn from each other. So for next time, complete everything that you still need to complete, want to complete, creating a list of endorsers. 
would be very nice to have. One more important issue is please feel free to promote the open webinar on the 17th of February from 10 till 11 Amsterdam time, so CET. So for other regions, it's a different time. In the uh, chat, the registration link has been shared. So already you can also uh, register right now already. So you need to register also when you are part of this Zoom meetings. And yeah, that's it. So we are very looking, very much looking forward to see you in Canvas. You have a week from now and we will try to respond on the things that you post. No, we will not try. We will respond. <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. Exciting also presentations from partners in Africa. <laughs>